Hey everyone and welcome back to Neo. On this video we're going to be setting up a Kusarigama build. And uh, also Neo just got its first DLC. So we're going to have a series of new messages popping up and there's going to be sort of some new things that we might get a glimpse into. So it says your level limit and the amount of Amrita needed to level up has been changed. You can now transform into female characters. After completing a certain mission, simply select Trade in the Hidden Tea House. If you have already completed the mission, you do not need to complete it again. An online PvP mode has been added. You can access it by selecting Battle from a Toady Gate. And then Mission Change to Twilight Mission. So the new Twilight Missions over here, they're not new. Um, just change the uh, rotation like normal. And uh, it looks like they added some new missions because I believe the total Kodama count used to be about 140, 150, and now it's 175. So we got some more Kodama in the game now. But anyways, that's not our main concern here. What we want to do is switch to a Kusarigama build. Uh, let's see, combat titles have been unlocked. You can view them from the titles window. That's also something new. We'll uh, possibly look at that. Uh, but anyways, first thing we want to do, I believe I have a Book of Reincarnation, and I do, so we are going to kill all of my current skills and stats and all that. And there we go, those numbers, it's showing for skills very much incorrect, I believe. And it looks like I got 7,788,453 Amrita to work with. Okay, so how do we want to start here? I think probably the first thing I want to do is make a Kusadagama because I don't have one. So let's go to the blacksmith. We're going to forge weapon. We want the Kusadagama. And none of these Kusadagama have special effects, which is a really, real big bummer. I would, I would like to get an elemental attack on them, but that's not going to happen. So, uh... This is the best one I can make in terms of damage. The other ones fall a little bit short. So I think I'm going to make one of these. 450 to 481 damage. And uh, really the only thing it takes that uh, is expensive is a Bungasa rib. Or at least rare. Not expensive. I don't know if you can actually buy those. Don't think so. Anyways, I want to make this. We're going to use all of the purple ingredients. And that all looks good. So let's go ahead and forge and hope we get a purple... Or at least a blue. Oh, yellow. Well, that sucks. Let's make another one. Um, add that to inventory. So, let's try this again. Hopefully we get a little bit more lucky. Hey, there we go. That one's purple. Ooh, life recovery by final blow. Uh, what is that? Close combat... Attack, key reduction. Oh, nice. Just automatically no uh, conditions to be met for that. That's fantastic. It's got seven break, also good. And parry uh, goes up by 14.6% in a critical state. But I'm probably not going to be doing much parrying when I'm in critical. Because that's pretty risky. But anyways, this is a great weapon to start off with. So let's add that to inventory. Oh, I could have equipped it. Oh, well, we'll back out. So we will toss that on in place of the dual swords. And actually I want to put one in the offhand as well so this will work for that. Um, because I'm going to pick a clan that's going to give me a bonus for having two Kusarigamas. So those are equipped for now. Okay now I also want to equip all of the um, gear I would ideally want to use. Um, so like I know at least I have that Kingo armor in the bank. So this right here. So uh, let's put that in the item box. And I think that's it. Do I have any weapons I might want? Nope, didn't save any weapons or any Kusarigama. Probably should have, but I didn't. So what we want to do is put that chest piece on. Even though I'm not going to get any stats from it yet because I don't have enough uh, in body or strength. But it's going on. 
That actually doesn't look that bad with that look I have. Might just keep it that way. At least for a little bit. Um, Alright, so let's see. Let's take a look at what I need for all of this gear. So I need 13 strength, 13 body. And that's really it. Okay, so I just gotta make sure I get 13 strength and 13 body. So that becomes active. And if I get any more of those crossed sickles pieces, I might use them because the set bonus is actually fairly good. It's got damage reduction, skill damage on Tiger Sprint. I probably won't use that. I believe that's Katana skill. But uh, the four piece, close combat damage 10.2% and increase attack and defense when using Raiken. Which uh, I'm not positive what that is. Is that a Guardian Spirit? Yeah, it's a guardian spirit. Which one is Raiken? Might not have that. Or maybe that's the little dog. Hmm. Well, if I can get four pieces of this, I might consider using that. Because that's a pretty good bonus. And then what's the five piece again? Close combat. Attack. Enemy electrified. Ooh, 27.5%. Yeah, that's a very tempting set. Oh, wait, that's Warrior of the West. What am I looking at? I'm dumb. I was looking at the wrong set. Uh, okay, there we go. The cross sickles. I remembered it being even better. And it is. 15% final blow damage. Close combat up 7.1% and increase attack and defense with Aya Komori, which I believe is that bat guardian spirit. So that's a possibility. But anyways, um, this set probably, although Warrior of the West really isn't bad. If I could get four pieces of that, maybe. It's worth considering. But this is the one I would much prefer, especially that six piece is pretty nice too. Close combat damage up. It's definitely worth considering. But anyways, 13 strength and 13 body. Need to remember that for these skills. So let's put everything up to 10 to start because that's a good spot to just have everything at. Dexterity I want up at 20. Magic I want up at 20. And then I'm going to stick with Kato, so that just needs 10 spirit for his passives. So that's a good starting point. Then I need the 13 strength and the 13 body for that chest piece. And let's see. Equipment rate or equipment weight rate, not even close to 70%, so that's fine. That's at 53%. Uh, so yeah, I think the rest might just get dumped into Dexterity, which determines the effect and capacity of your ninjutsu, but it also increases your Kusadigama's attack, which is the uh, stat that's uh, most useful for that. So I don't know why it doesn't list it there, but that's what it does. So like we can, I can show you that right now. Put a point into that, that Kusadigama gets 62 more attack. Skill, 59. Strength does nothing. Stamina does nothing, heart does nothing, and body would get it up to 59. So anyways, it's all going into decks. And that's 55 points, jeez. Which is going to give me a ton of ninja skill points and uh, ninjutsu power. So this is going to be a Kusadagama and very heavy ninja build. Uh, so yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I think that's all I need. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. So let's go ahead and level up. So we're back to level 99. And then let's just make sure nothing went wrong. We've got all my armor up and running. If everything looks good, the Kusadagama's got 614 attack. And for some reason, the yellow one has more. Which is kind of interesting. Probably because the change to attack. Or no. Just has a lower attack multiplier for some reason. But anyways, it's a good starting point. Uh, so, what do we want to do next? Probably spend our skills. And this is where it's going to get a little uh, different. The transition from katana to dual swords was pretty smooth. This is going to be a very different transition. And we've got 115 samurai skill points to work with. So, let's see what we can do. Uh, grapple, we want that. We know what that does. Uh, Reaper. This is an interesting attack. Slashes the enemy with the Kusadagama Sickle. Press button repeatedly to vary the technique. Um, looks like it do a ton of damage, but 
I doubt I'm gonna get in very many situations where I could actually pull it off. But I need to get it anyway because I want to unlock Blade Spin. So let's grab it. And then we have Summer Twilight. Increases your attack, but also the amount of key damage you receive. Can only be used when your sword is sheathed. So, um, probably won't be using this. I don't want to receive more key damage. That sounds bad. But once again, I need it because I want Blade Spin. Spins forward with the Kusadigama and slices the enemy. And that is activated by pressing square while guarding. So that one sounds good. We're going to get that. And then Autumn Dust decreases the amount of key used when dodging, but also your defense. Can only be used when your sword is sheathed. I don't want that. Winter Dawn increases the amount of key damage you inflict, but also the amount of key used when attacking. Can only be used when your sword is sheathed. I don't want that either. Uh, Whirlwind Kick kicks the enemy. Uh, and that's... Uh, square while guarding, which I don't want because I got blade spin. But we'll take a look at it. So, not interested. Then we have leaping strike, slashes upward with the Kusadigama while jumping, and that's uh, triangle while guarding. Doesn't seem like that would be super effective, so I'll probably skip out on that as well. Uh, flux, we want that, of course. And then flux too. Uh, once again, flash attack. I never could get that to work. Uh, maybe it's good, but I just could never get it to do it for me, so we're going to not get that. Uh, key Pulse Heaven. High stance only. Activates when you recover. Full key from a Key Pulse. Raises the damage caused by your next attack. Of course, we want that. Uh, foot Sweep. This one seems really, really good, and uh, Shima Sakon, I believe, was using it on me, even though he had a spear. Uh, or at least a very similar skill. Uh, this is high stance only, knocks an enemy down by sweeping their la legs with the Kusadigama's metal weight. So that looks incredibly useful. So we're going to use that. And that's going to replace one of those other skills I didn't care about. That's fine. Uh, and then we have Armor Piercer. It's a passive, increases damage of final blows by 8%. So we want that. Take another for 4% and another for another 4%. Next we have Living Water Heaven. High stance only enables you to use key pulses even when dodging, of course. Then we have Serpent Strike. High stance only throws the Kusadigama sickle at an enemy and draws them close, or propels you toward them if they are large. So that seems incredibly useful. We're gonna use that for sure. Next we have Crimson Flurry. High stance only swings the Kusadigama around, striking the enemy repeatedly. So that looks pretty good, but I believe we already have foot sweep for that. So yeah, we don't... foot sweep looks way better, so we're sticking with foot sweep. Then we have Crimson Flurry 2. Press triangle after Crimson Flurry to slam down the Kusadigama. We're not going to get it, but we can take a look. Next we have Key Pulse Man, uh, raises damage uh, on your next attack when you uh, perfect Key Pulse in mid stance, of course we want that. And then Waterfall, mid stance only, parries an enemy attack throwing them backwards. So that, it'd be nice to have a parry, however, it would get rid of Foot Sweep, and Foot Sweep seems to knock them down anyway, and that's sort of the point of a parry. So we're gonna wait on this. I might use it at some point, but for right now, I think we're gonna just stick with foot sweep. Oh wait, foot sweep is high stance only. Never mind, I'm dumb. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get that parry. And that's gonna replace something. I don't know what, maybe up here. Let's see, what was it? Ah, it's gonna replace uh, Reaper. And I don't care about that, that's fine. Okay, uh, next we have Masterful Guard. Mid stance only. Guard just before an incoming hit to block the attack or to knock the attacker off balance. So, yep, yeah, I definitely want that. Next we have Living Water Man. Uh, key pulse when dodge on uh, mid stance, of course. Then we have Shadow Strike. Increased damage dealt to enemies from behind by 6%. It's a passive. We're going to grab all these. Next up we have Black Vines. 
Mid slash low stance only throws the Kusatagama's metal weight at an enemy and draws them close, or propels you towards them if they are large. So the same as Serpent Strike, but this is for mid and low stance. So I believe it's actually the same animation. Uh, so yeah, sounds good. And then a Whirlwind. Mid, low stance only, swings the Kusatagama's metal weight in a wide circle, then throws the sickle forward with an extra square. Uh, that looks good, but I think it's gonna replace something I want. Let's see. Pretty sure I already put something there. I think it was... Ah, yes, it was Blade Spin. So I don't think that's better than Blade Spin, because Blade Spin was pretty awesome. So I think we're gonna stick with Blade Spin. So, pass on Whirlwind. Uh, then we have Tangle Strike. Mid low stance only, follows up a combo with a strike that uses the Kasadagama's metal weight to slam the opponent. I don't believe I have anything for the end of a combo uh, on anything, so I think we'll just get that. May or may not use it. So yeah, that didn't replace anything. Then we have Tangle Strike 2. After performing Tangle Strike, press triangle to perform a slicing attack. So, uh, I guess we may as well. It's only three points. Okay, next up, Key Pulse Earth, of course. Raise the damage of next attack on a perfect Key Pulse in low stance. Uh, then we have Retreating Strike. Low stance only follows up a combo with a back step while also pelting the enemy with the Kusatagama's metal weight. So that seems pretty good, however... We've already got the Tangle Strike. So, I don't know. I think we'll just stick with Tangle Strike. And then we have Full Moon Kata 1. When your health is at max, your close combat damage increases by 6%. Oh, okay. Well, if I gotta buy it anyway, I may as well use it. So, uh, we'll replace Tangle Strike for Low Stance with the Retreating Strike. And then we'll get all three tiers of this. Full Moon Kata. So if I can stay at max health, I'm going to do way more damage. Uh, then we have Living Water Earth. Enables you to keep pulse when dodging, of course. Then Chain Pull. Low stance only. Throw the Kusatagama's metal weight. If the attack depletes enemy key, it will draw them close and slash them with the sickle. And that is a really, really cool looking ability. But I don't know if I want to replace Blade Spin, because that's what it would replace. Blade Spin just seems useful. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I think we're for now we're going to pass on Chain Pull. But it's definitely tempting. But for now, we're passing on it. Uh, so, let's see. These are new. Um, they just added these with this new DLC. Uh, it says Melee Mastery 1. Melee Weapon Attack plus 2. Learning a more advanced version of the same skill will replace the previous one. I don't know what it means by that. Um, what it might mean is... Um, so like when I grab this first tier Then I can grab the second tier to increase melee weapon attack by four And what I think it means is it's only increasing it by four not by six by adding the first and second tiers together So I believe that's what it means. So I'm gonna grab that and Then we'll get the uh, third rank as well It's gonna take basically the rest of my skill points and that's gonna increase melee weapon attack by six and apparently it goes even higher, so you can really just dump mad amounts of points into that. Um, I don't know if I should have instead gotten the extra key from uh, Relentless in the Sword um, category. But we'll try that for now. More power is always good if I can manage my key, but that's a lot of key loss. So we'll see if that ends up being an issue or not. So next we have ninja skill points. Look how many points we have. It's absurd. 191, so um, haven't really done much ninjutsu throughout the whole game, but I think it's time to learn. Um, so we're going to be getting a whole lot of stuff, and we'll see what's good. And I haven't tried this stuff out, um, or at least most of it, so I'm, I'm just guessing here. I'm just grabbing what seems interesting. So let's see, we don't want any of that. I do want to get this, the Poison Gownlet Broth. And that allows you to prepare three doses of Gaunet Broth. Apply it to weapons for a poison effect. Now what I'm going to do is get all three tiers of this. And that's going to give me six uses of it. So you can actually use all three tiers together. 
Um, so I, I wasn't doing that before. Before I was just using two of uh, a certain ability, but I'm gonna use six of this. And of course it costs more jutsu, but I think it's worth it. And then what else we want? We want to get this passive, I think. Plus 10 against poison. So we'll get the healing anti-toxin pill. I don't think I'll ever use this, but it allows you to prepare three anti-toxin pills when taken. They absorb and increase your resistance to poison. So a little poison resistance, but like I said, I doubt I'll ever use it. But I do want the passives. So we'll take those. Uh, poison sure you can, maybe. We're not gonna get it for now, but that one's a possibility. Uh, hemlock breath. Uh, apply paralysis or paralytic effect to your weapons. I might get this, but for now I'm gonna stick with the poison. Because poison damage seems pretty good. So uh, we'll see how that works out. But possibly paralysis as well. Uh, and then let's see. Medusa powder? I don't remember this. Uh, just paralyzing dust basically. Uh, I do want to get that paralytic control passive though. So we get the Shikengon pill. It allows you to prepare three Shikengon pills. When taken, they absorb and, and increase your resistance to paralysis. Dad, I'll be using that, but we need it for the passives. Let's grab all three tiers of that. Paralysis, sure you can, maybe, but probably not. Blinding shells. I think I want to experiment with these. Allows you to ready two blinding shells. They explode when thrown, sending a cloud of particles into the air. Enemies affected by them will be rendered unable to shoot or throw weapons. Reduces the distance at which you can lock onto enemy players. So let's grab all three tiers of the blinding shell. And then Makabishi will pass on that. Makabishi ball will pass. Ground fire will pass on that. Kakudamas, no. Saboteur, that just increases the amount you can carry, and then that increases the damage of Kakudamas and Rokudamas. We'll pass on that. Bomb making, we'll pass on that. Improvised projectile, no thank you. I do want to get this one though, Frugality. Enables you to retrieve projectiles that dealt the killing shot to an enemy's weak point. So that means we need to get Improvised Projectile. Allows you to ready two Improvised Projectile scrolls. When used, you will get one shot from a ranged weapon, even if you have no ammunition. So I would never use that, but we will use Frugality. Quivermaker, no thanks. I think we're going to use the gun. So we'll get the shot pouch increased all the way. And then we'll also increase the, uh, the gun damage, the match lock. Round carrier, no. Cannon master, no. Tiger running. This one's a little tempting, but I think I'll pass on it. But I do want the dashing passive. So we'll get tiger running, which uh, when used increases your run and dash speeds. So we'll pick that up. And we'll get dashing one, two, and three. Then we'll also get cloud runner, which is going to increase our running speed. Not sure how useful that's going to be, but it could be fun at least. Uh, smoke ball, no thank you. Quick change, of course. So we got to get the smoke ball. Uh, when used, they create a smoke screen that makes it hard for enemies within the smoke to see you. Renders enemy players unable to lock onto you when you are in a smoke screen. So we'll grab uh, that quick change, of course. And then dodging passives, of course, reduces key used in an evasive roll. We're going to grab all three of those. We could get more quick change scrolls. Uh, we'll see how many points I have left over. Because um, I it might be useful to have two. I usually only use them on bosses, but maybe uh, I could grab another. We'll see. Uh, sneak attack? Uh, yes, probably. Um, at least in my katana builds and... The dual sword, the sneak attack kind of became useless because it was better to lead with other abilities. But I'm not sure with the Kasatagama, it's only one point, so we should probably get it. Uh, catwalking, no. Suppa, no. Kodama transformation, no. That, that one's funny, though. Uh, Holy Man to increase our sacred water count. I don't actually want that, but I do want to carry more elixirs, so we'll grab all three of those. 
Uh, power pills. I think we're actually going to carry six of these now. So let's get all three ranks of it. And we have snake bite technique. This will be good with my galnet broth. Increases recurrent damage dealt by 10%. So we'll get all three of those, which will raise it by 20%. And then Endurance 1, we'll probably get this as well. Reduces continuous damage from poison and fire by 6%. So let's grab, uh, yeah, let's go all three on those. Although we're getting a little low on points. So we need to be a little careful. Uh, Composure, don't need that. Hand of Death, no. And actually, that's it. So uh, I might get the second Quick Chain Scroll. But before I do that, let me make sure I've got enough Nunjutsu to actually ready all that stuff. So let's go back to the shrine. Ready Jutsu. And okay, so we want to ready all three Galnet Broths. We'll replace the Fire Amulet. And then... We want to ready all three Power Pills. And that already has a slot, so those six go in. Blinding Shells, all three of those. We'll put... That here, I suppose. And I think that's it. Quick change just needs to be readied. So there it goes, it's ready. And that was actually perfect. It used all my jutsu. So, perfect. Um, however, if I want to use another quick change, I'll need to get more jutsu and then put the quick change in. But we'll see on that. Uh, for now, let's use my Omeo skill points. So, of course, we want sloth. We're gonna grab that. I think we'll just stick with the two. Uh, fire shot, water shot, no. Lightning shot, no. Possibly lightning talismans. But let's see how many points. Well, it's only one point. Let's get it, just in case. Earth stop, no. Shadow round, no. Soul release, no. We wanna get all three levels of the uh, pure mind for increased yokai realm resistance and then we want to increase the range of our purifications shockwave no kakai no spirit water no oasis talisman rejuvenation no although those are always tempting but i don't think i need more healing resistance talisman no steel talisman no protection no I would like to get Evil Ward, but I gotta spend a lot of points to get to it. So I think we'll pass on that, just have to be more defensive. Uh, Carnage Talismans are always tempting, but I don't know if I want to risk it. Re increase your attack at the cost of your defense. Power Pills don't have any negative. I don't think they raise it nearly as much, but still, there's no uh, negative to your defense. So I kind of prefer the, uh, the Power Pills. I do want to get more Amretta gains though, so let's get the Divination Talisman, the Pleiades, or Pleiades, something like that. Uh, and then the Extraction Talismans, which we might actually use for more experience, we'll see. But I do want the passive gains to Amretta, so we'll grab all three tiers of that. Which leaves me with 21 more points. Uh, I want the Luckbringer. Talisman so I can get the luck passives. And only five points remaining. Uh, well, let me make sure I can ready everything first. That's always the important part. So, ready jutsu, we want Amio. Looks like I got 20, that should be plenty. So, ready sloth. Oh, I don't have a spot for sloth anymore. Um, well, we can just, uh, I guess we could put elixirs on the back bar. Or maybe we could put sloth on the back bar. Actually, let's just put sloth on the back bar. We can go, uh, in place of the sacred water. Because I don't use sloth that much. And I think that's the only one I want from Omnio. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. So, I don't need any more, uh... Capacity. So, that means I can just use these points. I think I'll just get, uh, the Guardian Spirit Talisman. 
so I can unlock extended living weapon use time. And we'll get, well, I guess just one rank of that. And uh, I think that's going to do it. We'll keep those other two points for something. We'll see. Okay, um, I think I'm just going to keep those other ninja skill points for now. I don't know if I want another quick change. Maybe I'll want to experiment with something else. I don't want to use those points right now. So let's see. Let's get rid of that exclamation mark. I think we're all set with my Kusadagama stuff. Looks pretty good. Uh, so I think we're just about done here. Let's go to the hidden tea house. I want to change my clan. Oh, which means I need to go online. So let's uh, hit R3. That'll log me in. Go to that hidden tea house. Miyagi Bunny. And the one I want, big surprise, it's the uh, sickle graphic, or perhaps that's a Kusadagama, but it looks like two sickles. It's Kobayakawa. So it increases your key if you have a Kusadagama, uh, and it increases it further if you have two, which is what I did. And it also increases attack from behind by 8%. So let's go ahead and switch to Kobayakawa. Okay, and uh, we may as well look at the description. I didn't look at all of them because there's just so much, but if we're going to use the clan, we may as well know about it. The Kobayakawa clan were originally from Aki province, today's Hiroshima prefecture, but later claimed Nashima in Chikuzen, Fuk Fukuoka as their domain. Famous clan leaders in two include Takakage and Hideaki. Kobayakawa Takakage was the third son of Mori Motanari, but joined the Kobayakawa clan and eventually rose to lead it, later swearing fealty to Toyotomi Hideyoshi. He adopted Hideaki, a relative of Hideyoshi's, as his son, and in due course Hideaki succeeded as head of the clan. Hideaki was despised by Hideyoshi, and due to his repeated strategic errors, was ordered to give up the clan's traditional holdings. After Hideyoshi's death, however, Hideaki recovered the clan domain in Nashima with the help of Tokugawa Ieyasu. It is said that the debt he felt he owed to Ieyasu was the reason for his later abandonment of the Toyotomi clan. The Kobayakawa battle flag, Chigai Gama, was a pair of cross sickles, said to be a reference to Suwa Shrine where a sickle was revered as the sacred vessel of the deity. The imagery was reportedly used to pray for both a bountiful harvest and victory in battle. <laughs> Alright, so did we do everything? I think we did. Let's look at our status, make sure everything looks right. Uh, body, heart, yep, stats look good, that is so much dex. Level 99, one more and I get a trophy. Uh, I've got 202,000 Amaretto waiting, so, uh, almost to that trophy. Life is 2,268, key is 132. Equipment rate is at 53 point, or 53%, which is a B. It'll remain to be until 70, so I should get some heavier armor if I find some with good stats. Uh, gold, I've got a million and a half. My attack is 620, my break is 54, my parry is 38. Uh, ranged weapon, I don't care about that. Defense is 761, toughness is 156, which is not bad. It's green for some reason. I think that means good. I don't know. And then I also have passive uh, elemental resist now, which is also very nice because of those uh, ninja passives I picked up. And my verse yokai realm is 617. And of course I have no kusadigama proficiency. And those are all the special effects I'm getting. I don't think I've shown this before, but it lists everything you've got. There's a whole lot going on there. Look at that, luck plus 71. And Amrita Earned is up 14.2%. That's nice. Using Kato, uh, they've added battle information for 1v1 and 2v2 fighting. And you have a uh, rating, apparently. And all right. So I think we're all set. And on the next video, we'll be taking this build out for a spin. Hopefully it works out well for us. 
So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.